All right, we're gonna make a shelf for the couch that I hate, so that it, I won't hate so much. Uh, so we got a 10 foot board of oak and a four foot board of oak. That'll be cut down to three, but whatever. Measurements just work. So I'm gonna chamfer it, sand it, and then I'm gonna pre-stay and stay the dark walnut so it looks nice. And my supervisor is here. You gonna help? No? Man, he's a good supervisor. All right, my pair to see, I just gave the edges a little chamfer. I'm not a huge fan of large chamfers, but you know, just something to break the edge so you don't cut yourself. All right, just applying a pre-stain, just so it looks more even. Especially with oak, I find the uh, stain will soak in really hard in one spot, not so hard in the other. So just a little bottle of pre-stain. And then we'll wait a couple minutes, wipe it off, and put on the, uh, I think it's the dark walnut finish we're going for. Just make sure you follow your instructions, your uh, whatever stain you're using. So for this pre-stain, you put it on, 15 minutes later, you wipe off the excess, and then it's ready to go as long as you coat within two hours, and then it's actually the stain for the stain. You put it on, wipe it off after 15 minutes. Just get rid of the excess. You don't get any sticky pools of oil or anything. So this should be ready to go. Uh, I'm going to put on some dark walnut stain, one of my favorites, and the wife's, which is what really matters. Uh, semi-transparent. Dark Walnut 2716. Minwax Premium Oil. Works great. No complaints. Gonna put it on. Alright, I'm just putting on that, uh, stain. So, you'll get these spots where the stain doesn't really soak in. I don't know if that's too much pre-stain or what. But I like to just... It says to go with the wood grain, like this. See how the grain goes? It's pretty straight. But I find when you get those, if you, I don't know, like do swirls, kind of force it in. Sometimes, I don't know if it's from compression in the wood or over soaking the pre-stain that's coming back out. But I find if you just give it a swirl and then work it back in and then do your long strokes with the wood grain again, I find they go away pretty easy. And then uh, afterwards when you wipe everything down with a cloth they usually even out anyway so it doesn't matter but you know just in case they bug you anyways just uh finishing up this and then uh wipe it down and we'll be ready to start cutting and that's why you always wipe off your excess because whether you think so or not there's a lot of extra even if you're being sparing like i didn't try to soak this i just wanted to change color a little i like oak just needed a little darker but uh even still even with being sparing on the extra stain i still got a lot of excess so anyways let's wipe down uh, i'll give it i think it needs two hours to dry but i'll i'll give it overnight and uh then we'll cut it to size give it a finished coat and then i'll show you how i'm gonna build this bench behind the couch or shelf behind the couch on a side note these i just got these from my grandfather i uh i never really liked the idea of saw horses but man as far as uh staining goes 10 out of 10 let the stain dry overnight and i got i don't know you can probably see that so i got uh spots where i didn't wipe off enough stain that's fine but I'm trying to show you all over here. There's a lot of spots where I think the, I think the pre-stain must have, uh, there must have been too much. So when it evaporated out, I think it, uh, I think it brought out some of the stain. So I'm getting all those bald spots, even though I thought I got them all. So I'm just gonna wipe it down, get all that extra stain off. 
Uh, I'm going to hit it with a light pass of sandpaper. Probably just like 240 or something, 220, whatever I have. Just real light. And then I'm going to put down another thin coat of, uh, of stain. See if that fix it. Okay. Just did another. And this is fresh still. So we'll check it after it's done. But after a little quick little sand. And then I just did a really light pass with some stain. Really just buffed it in there. Not too much of a soak. And then just immediately wiped it off again. Just try and even it out. And uh, well, it's looking pretty good. There's a couple of light spots there. But that's okay. I, I actually like the grain of oak. That's why we chose it. That and it's uh, a little cheaper than maple. But anyways, it looks great. So let that dry. Then we'll put a coat of... I think I'll put some lacquer on it. Actually. Yeah. All right, I'm going to spray on some uh, clear lacquer. This is the bottom, so you can still see, still has a, a couple of spots and some scratches. I'm not too worried about it. It's going to be drilled to the wall. So. Make sure you don't get these edges. If you're going to glue them, start on the bottom. And then as you go... After you're done your top coat, you flip it, what you can do, well, the top, second, this one's almost empty. I just finished the first coat if you are a little too fast and you apply something like a lacquer or anything other than an oil base finish over an oil stain sometimes you'll get this that's not a big deal I'm not too worried about it like I said it still looks good it's just a couple of spots there's some oil I'm trying to seep back out of the wood and it actually looks worse in person than it does on camera Okay. Anyway, so this is wait two hours. I'm gonna apply another coat. It actually is probably pretty good with one. I like it. It's already dry to the touch, but you gotta let it cure. And uh, an obvious tip that everyone knows are these painter squares. You can just print them on 3D printer or make them out of wood or, or go buy them or anything. They're great because you can coat both sides of a material at one time. You get a little, little pin brick, but it doesn't matter. All right, time to come clean. I'm gonna make a pretty lazy shelf. It's going behind a couch. So I'm not going to make it anything super impressive. So I'm just going to pocket hole up into the shelf itself. And then I'll cross drill a screw into the wall and studs for support. And then I'll back the couch up to it and you'll never see it. So. So this pocket hole drill bit, it's also really useful for when you need to drill for regular screws. I'm just gonna use this to stop my depth perfect and uh, already have a hole size for my screws that are gonna mount to the wall. It's gonna be great. I also uh, used the guide and the bit and I roughly drew the angle that that hole goes through. The bit traveled so I'll know to miss. I'll, I'll go Row here and middle here, and that'll be perfect. And then for this one, because I'm mounting to a wall, I'll also put one right dead center. Alrighty, I'll use the bit to uh, drill holes for mounting. Missed everything, worked perfect. Like I said, use that line as a guide so I knew where I could drill in so that I wouldn't cut through these holes. Not that it matters, because once you dry screws in, they're not in the way anyway, but, you know, safe and sorry kind of thing.